learn about the bracha. All right, let's begin. Today we're going to learn about birkat kohanim, the blessing that the kohanim give. The blessing that the kohanim give. This is a ble- this is a, a applicable even now. It's true that since the the first temple was even destroyed, that the tribes got all mixed up, and that the ten tribes got lost. So we don't know who is where and which. But what we do know from even back then is who was a Kohen and who was a Levi and who was a Yisrael. Where is this in the Parsha? What uh, what line? This is in um, chapter six. Chapter six, line number 25, 22. Chapter six, 22, we're in the book of Numbers. All right, but nowadays people are pretty sure who is a Kohen and who is not. Why? Because this was this was preserved through the generations. People who were Kohanim usually had proof that they were Kohanim. Usually. Had proof that they were Kohanim. Okay, there's such a thing as a Kohen that this can, can, can disqualify himself. But nevertheless, nowadays they have we can pretty we can be fairly sure now that if a person today says he is a coin, he is a coin. Especially if he says he's a coin and that his father was a coin. If a person says I'm a coin because my mother was a coin, then he's not a coin. But if he says my father was a coin, usually his father, his father's father told him he was a coin. His great grandfather's great grand told that they were kohanim. Okay, it's it's not it's not a hundred percent sure. There was one person in in a uh, Hasid Chabad that his name was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Hilomi Parich. And anytime he would come across anyone who said he was a Kohen, he would uh, do Pidyon Aben, because he was a, himself was the first one. He would do Presumed. Huh? Presumed. You can presume he was going, but nevertheless, he always had a doubt if he really had done the commandment of being redeemed. It's the firstborn has to be redeemed. You have to get a Kohen, you give him money, and there's a whole procedure that goes through. So he would uh, do this with every coin. Any person that said he was a coin, he'd say, redeem me, redeem me. He would give, he would pay him money for the redemption. That's how it's done. Okay, but nevertheless. Yeah, it's now interesting. Be, um, I, was, I was reading the, uh, the Rambam's laws on Moshe that you were talking about before. And one of the things that Moshe will do, I believe, is to, um, you know, uh, verify the pedigree. But right. Verify That's the... Right. Who the real Levites are, who the real Kohen are. Right, right, right. Right. It's a mission, and where is it? Edios, I think, in the end. It says, What the Kohen, Ben Yish, Ben, 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 ben David, what's he going to come and do? And Elio, I'm sorry, Elio and Navi, what's he going to come to do? That he'll uh, clarify things and ben, what Mashiach is going to do, make the peace in the world. There's different opinions, but that's right. That's what the, what the Rambam says is according to the law. All right, but there is another thing that the Kohanim do. And that is that they bless the people. It's a, it's a commandment. Now the, the Kohanim, they bless the people only when they're usually in the mood to do it. So therefore, outside of Israel, they don't bless the people that much. Usually they only bless them on Musaf, the extra pair of the holidays. But in Israel, there's some places that even bless every day. There's a lot of places to bless every day. In Kfar Chabad, even, there's some people that bless every day. They went to the rabbi in Kfar Chabad and they asked for permission. They're Kohanim, they want to bless the people. And they said, yes, yeah. so they bless every day. But, but in Yerushalayim, in the, in the, they, they bless every day? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. You have to go there. Every, every synagogue is different. Also, by, by us, you know, every day, how many minions do we have here in Beit Menachem? 50, 100. I don't know how many minions that there are. You know, there's one after the other, and they're, they're, all, they're, they're in different corners in different places. But when these particular Kohanim are there, as uh, they make the blessing of the Kohanim. At, at the quartal for Fasikin, there's Ardavan and a minion with Kohanim, and there, there's a, a very, I don't know, if they regard themselves as special Kohanim, but they, when the Bekat Kohanim comes out at Fasikin, they actually spread out 
can go to the different minyanim to do Berkha Konim and join up with the other Konim in those minyanim. Because it's essentially the minyan that I daven in is a, essentially a minyan of Konim. Uh huh, isn't that nice? Right in the center. Yeah. But, and so, everyone yeah. prays at the same time? They all pray at the same time? Yeah, everybody pray, prays at the same time because it's for Sikkim. So when the time comes for Beka Kornim, they all spread out, and it's an amazing thing. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, so here it goes. It's a positive commandment. It says a Kornim, a Kornim uh, is supposed to do it <clears throat> unless he doesn't feel good. If not, he should leave the room. So here we go. Let's do. Let's let's look into this. If you want to look, you can look at the laws of Berchus Kohanim. It's in the laws of prayer. You see what they have to do. They have to raise their hand. Who can be? A, who can bless? Who can? By Daber Hashem on Moshe Lemor, God spoke to Moshe to say. Sentence number twenty-three. Daber al Aaron, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you should bless." At Bnei Israel, the Jewish people, and more lamb, you should say to them. What, what does it have to say? Say to them. Those two words are are seemingly extra. The sentence could have just said very. They could leave those two words off, and the sentence would make total sense. Right. Let's take it from the beginning. Speak, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, "This is the way you should." Bless the Jewish people. And that's it. Yivarech Hashem then say, what, what does it have to say? And more them. So Rashi also has this question. And right now, again, I want to repeat, Rashi usually comments on a question that a five-year-old child would ask. Five-year-old child is Ben Chamesh Lamikra. At five years old, children should start learning Chumash. So a children, child that learns Chumash, he'll, he'll read these words and he'll have a question. Why are these extra words here? So Rashi explains. Amor lehem, kamo zechor b'shamor, and belaz in Lushan Amzar, whatever is in French, dishnit, dish, dishnit. I don't. Okay, whatever it was. Anyway, what it means is, it says zechor b'shamor day of Shabbos means you have to remember constantly the Shabbat. And you have to pr- keep constantly the day of Shabbat. In other words, Shabbat should be something in your mind all the time. You should always be remembering Shabbat. <clears throat> it says that Shammah used to go every day and he would buy food and he would say, this is for Shabbat. And if he found something nicer, so he would say, put the first one aside and say, this one is going to be for Shabbat. So you should think about this. So it's the same thing here. The Kohanim should be always thinking, and more than me, they should always be thinking about blessing the Jewish people, about saying to them, Okay, there's other explanations also. Let's go. And more lamb. Why does it say say to them? Another explanation. Why are these two extra words there that the Kohanim should say to them? It means she you kulam shom in. It means that everyone should hear. The Kohanim shouldn't bless quietly, or they shouldn't just sit in their house and bless the Jews. They sit in the house and think, oh, the Jews are good, I bless them. No, they should say these words and they should say it out loud so that everyone here, so it should be in a congregation. Okay, another one, emor lahem, say to them. Why does it have to stress say to them? Again, these two words seem to be extra. <clears throat> so it says, let's look at the, the, the last Rashi. Amor, malay. This word, emor, is written full. There's a vav in the word, see? Aleph, mem, vav, resh. That vav doesn't have to be there. It could be written aleph, mem, resh. And you know that the, the vav will be understandable. It will be self-understood that there's a vav there because you could write with a little dot on the top. And more lehem. So it says, why is it written in the Torah? If you look in the Torah, this word and more is written full. So it says malay, why? It means that when you bless them, it should be a full blessing. Lo tevarachem bechipazon. Don't bless the Jewish people when you bless. Don't do it quickly. <clears throat> and like you're Russian. <clears throat> you should do it with intention. <clears throat> with a complete heart. It is when you're blessing, you should really have the intention that they should be blessed. That the Jewish people should really <clears throat> receive the blessing. It's not that you're just standing there and saying these words. Let God take care of it. 
Yivrech Hashem V'yishmerech, you say these magical words, and they think, no, you should be really thinking about that you're blessing them. Interestingly enough, the blessing, the Kohanim also make a blessing, because this, this is a commandment. They make a blessing before they do this commandment. Like we make a blessing before you put on tefillin, before you eat matzah. You make a blessing. Well, the Kohanim make a blessing before they bless the Jewish people. What's the blessing they say? Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Asher Kiddushanu B'Kedusha Shel Aaron, that you gave us the holiness of Aaron, V'tzivanu, you commanded us, the Vareich at Amcha Yisrael to bless your people Israel, Be'ahava with love. So a Kohen, when he blesses, he has to do it with love. In other words, he has to really intend that everyone hearing this blessing should be blessed. And he has to do it with love that he really wants everyone to be blessed. So what are these blessings? So really, it's a three-part blessing. <clears throat> That's the first part. God should bless you and he should protect you. That God should shine his face on you and grace you. That God should lift his face on you and give you peace. That's the blessing. It's a three-part blessing. Let's see what it means. Yevarechacha, that God should bless you and protect you. That's the first blessing. To bless you and protect you. Now, really, it's really each one of the blessings is, contains two parts, right? God should bless you and protect you, shine his face on you and grace you, and another one lift his face upon you and give you peace. But nevertheless, it's three separate blessings, and we say Amen after each one of the three. Yevarechacha, Hashem, Yishmerecha, and it's three different sentences. So God should bless you. Let's see what Rashi says. That God should bless you with property. You should have money, plenty. A person, when he has money, he has plenty. It's wonderful. Everybody should be rich. You have enough money to give charity. You have enough money to help others. You have enough money for your family. You have enough money for anything that you want. V'yishmarecha. What's the end of this first blessing? Like we said, it's a double blessing. God should bless you and protect you. Is this really two blessings or one blessing? Well, it's sort of two blessings, but it's also sort of one. That's why it's in one sentence together. And we say amen after these two words. God should bless you and protect you. What does it mean protect you? Rashi. Shalo yavo alecha shodidim. There should not come to you robbers. Litol mamancho. To take away your money. Shahnoten Matana, a person that gives a gift, Laavdo, to his servant, Eno Yogalishmor, and he cannot protect it, Mikal Adam. He can't protect the he gives a if I give a gift to one of my workers, so I can't watch him all the time, go after him. I don't have to put special police on him. I give him a gift. The Kiv and Shaboyim Listin, since there come robbers, the Notlimoto, and they take it, Mimeno. Is mana and he hasn't got any pleasure from this. <clears throat> well, we see this con constantly happens. People that win the the, the lottery, they win the lottery a million, ten million, a hundred million dollars. They win them wonderful, but th then afterwards they lose it all. So what good is the money? What good is the blessing? Especially if somebody steals it. But it's not the case with God. Avla Kodesh Baruchu, who no and he gives and he also protects. Harba Midrashim Doshu Hoba Sifre. There's a lot of uh, different teachings that can be learned out from this. That God protects you also. The known story about Unculus the Gear, that Unculus he was like the, the nephew or something of the king of Rome, of the Tsar, or it was not what's called the Caesar of Rome, and that he decided to convert. And they came to take him away. It's a long story, but they came to take him away. And before they grabbed them away, the soldiers tried to take him out of his house. It was a big embarrassment to, the, to his uncle. that one of his that became a Jew, of all the things to be a Jew. Here he's a Roman, a, a big leader. He can have anything that he wants to. A Jew, everybody hates him. So as he was going out of his house, he managed to free his hand and kiss the mezuzah. 
And the soldier said, what did you do that? You put a curse on us? He said, no, 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 no. This is a blessing from God. Usually if somebody gives you something precious, as you have to protect it. Here, God gives us everything and he protects it. He's on the, he's the, on the door. He gives it and he protects also. This is that all of them converted. And they converted the seven Noahic commandments, whatever they convert. Okay, so the first blessing, it really has two parts to it, but it's really one, that God should bless you and he should protect you. If he doesn't protect you, what is the blessing worth? Next sentence. God should shine his face on you and grace you. Let's see what this means. Ya'er Hashem panav elecha. Rashi. God should shine his face on you. Yir'e lecha panim sochachot. God should always show you smiling face. Panim tzahovot. And a face that is, how do you say, uh, another word shining, like a golden face of him. V'yechunecha. And God should give you grace, give you grace also in the eyes of others. You should be. And <clears throat> finally, the last one, Yisa Hashem Panavilecha, God should shine his face on you, says Rashi, Yichbosh Kaaso. He should not get mad at you when you're deserving. Yisim Lecha Shalom, and he will give you peace. For some of Shemei, I will put my name on them. Rashi says, Yevorachim B'Shem Amaforish. God says you will bless them with the explicit name of God, which we'll have to talk about this next time because we're... The Ani Yevorachim says the Kohanim will put my name on the Jewish people and I will bless them. What does it mean, I will bless them? Who? Who will I bless? So Rashi says, Li Yisrael, the Kohanim, they will bless them and I will bless them. Askim el Makoanim. I will agree with the blessing of the Kohanim. It was the Kohanim, they blessed the Jewish people, and God said, I will also agree with this blessing, I'll help it. That's one explanation. Dovarachim, I will bless them who I'll bless the Kohanim. The Kohanim, because they're blessing the Jewish people, as God said, I will bless them as well. There's a very interesting Balturim here, Balaturim. But we'll have to learn that next time. Have a look at it if you want to. It's very interesting. A lot of the, the number 25, the number. All right, let us learn 